Hello everybody and welcome back to another new video. I hope everybody out there had a great holiday season and yes it is that time of the year again. It's time to list out my top 10 albums of the year and as usual this video is going to come out right on the 31st of December. Uh, I usually try to wait until the very end of the year to record this uh, countdown video uh, just to give me enough time to really process and absorb all the great new records that came out from the very beginning of the year all the way till the very end. And uh, what a year in, in, in rock music. I thought it was a really solid year in rock. And uh, yeah, in this video, I'm gonna give you my top 10 albums of 2022. But before getting started, I wanted to give you my quick list of honorable mentions. Uh, these are my uh, records that I really enjoyed in 2022, but quite didn't crack my top 10. Uh, this year, I only have two of them. Uh, first of all, uh, the new record from Mikey Erg, Love at Leeds great pop punk album for Mikey Erg. Uh, you really gotta give it to Mikey Erg uh, because he's one of the very few pop punk artists that really keeps that kind of like um, old school early 2000s pop punk sound alive even nowadays in 2022 and he's really one of the best ones at it so great new record from Mikey Erg. Uh, he made it makes it to my list of honorable mentions some of the best albums of 2022. And finally, also the new album from a band called Planes, uh, which consists of uh, Katie Crutchfield of Waxahachie and Jess Williamson. Uh, they got together this year and they released a new album called uh, I Walked With You A Ways. I love that album. And this one really hurt not to include into my top 10 because uh, I really wanted it to be in, into my top 10 uh, because they have a fantastic track in this album called Problem With It. Uh, which in fact was my most played song in my Spotify uh, countdown thing of 2022. Love that track, great album also from overall from Planes. Again, it's called I Walk With You A Ways. I guess you could call it my top 11 album of the year. Quite didn't make it to my top 10. But anyways, uh, that, that's my quick list of honorable mentions. Now let's go ahead and get started with my top 10. Let's check them out. All right, and coming in at number 10, uh, the new record from Superchunk. Uh, the indie rock legends came back this year with an album called Wild Loneliness, and it came out on Merch Records. Uh, excellent album from Superchunk, as usual. They're one of the most consistent bands out there. And one word to describe this album, Pandemic. Uh, this is the Pandemic album from Superchunk. Obviously recorded or written uh, during the time of the pandemic, during the quarantine or during the lockdowns. So a lot of uh, songs about isolation and about uh, just staying at home. Um, particularly with uh, songs like City of the Dead and Endless Summer. Uh, Endless Summer was a fantastic song. It's, uh, it's probably one of my favorite songs of the year. Not only because of the melodies, but because of the overall theme, theme of the album and of the song. Uh, which is about uh, kind of like staying in this endless summer and not being able to move into spring, uh, which I thought it was a great analogy for the way that we lived in the last couple of years during the pandemic. Uh, and overall, I really like uh, this kind of records that represent a period in time which we all lived during the two years of the pandemic. Uh, I thought it was a really good and personal album. And again, the usual uh, great melodies from Superchunk are everywhere in this record. Lots of great new, new songs in this one. Alright, coming in at number 9 is the newest record from Sucker Mummy. And this one came out, oh, this one's called Sometimes Forever. And it came out on Loma Vista Recordings. Uh, really fantastic album from Soccer Mummy. I've been following this band for the last uh, uh, five years, I think. Uh, I believe this is the third or fourth album from the band. Uh, and I've enjoyed all of them, uh, but this one really hit me hard, mainly because of the overall uh, vibe of the record. It kind of has a little bit of a darker vibe, so it has uh, great fuzzy guitars, deep bass, and along with the whispering vocals from the, the singer from the band, uh, Sophie, I think it, it gives a really deep and uh, introspective vibe overall in the album, which I thought it was really great. Uh, some of the best tracks in, in this one are, are the songs called Bones, Shotgun, 
uh, and new demo. Fantastic album from Sucker Mummy. Definitely check it out. Uh, I only got this one on CD, but I d definitely should have picked it up on vinyl again. Uh, Sucker Mummy with Sometimes Forever. All right, coming in at number eight. This is the newest record from Plosives. And this one's just called Self-Titled. And it came out on Swami Records. And Plosives is the newest project from John Rees, uh, formerly of Rocket from the Crypt, as well as the Hot Snakes. And um, so as you can tell, uh, it's uh, a record coming in from John Rees. This is a punk rock album. Fast-paced guitars, uh, heavy guitars as well. So very reminiscent to the music from uh, Hot Snakes except maybe the vocals are a little bit more melodic compared to the, the vocals from the Hot Snakes, uh, which create a really great contrast between the, the melodic vocals and the heavy, fast-paced punk rock guitars, uh, which is a, it creates an effect that I really enjoyed in this record. And um, uh, yeah, this record is also very short. It's only 33 minutes long, as every punk rock album should be, just straight to the point, to just throw out there the fast-paced uh, fast uh, punk rock songs. A uh, great debut album from this new project called Plosives. Uh, if you check out something from this one, definitely check Hit the Brakes, Broken Eyes, and my favorite in this album, a song called Iron Will. Again, Plosives with the very first self-titled record. All right, coming in at number seven, this is one of my favorite bands of all time. They came back strong in 2022 with a great new album, Pixies with Doggerel. And this one came out just on uh, Pixies Recordings, so essentially a self-release. Fantastic new album from the reunited Pixies. Uh, if you watch my videos, you, you'll know that I've, I've always been a huge proponent of the reunion albums from the Pixies. Um, uh, in fact, I think all the reunion albums from Pixies have made my top 10 albums of the year. A and I think this is one of their strongest of the reunion albums. Of course, the classic four, the first four classic albums from the Pixies are going to be very hard to beat. But this one is still a really great, great um, uh, new album from the Pixies. Uh, it's also one of the most accessible albums for, uh, from the band. It has a lot of uh, very catchy and melodic tunes with songs like um, uh, what was it? Um, Thunder and Lightning, and there's a Moon On. Those are really earworms, uh, very catchy songs in this record. And uh, as well, they, they also do the very classic Pixies uh, thing with the loud, quite loud, especially in songs like uh, Dregs of the Wine. Great track as well. Overall, a fantastic new album from Pixies. They make my top 10 again in 2022 uh, after so many years. Uh, again, Pixies with Doggerel. All right, coming in at number six. Uh, this is the band that has taken the indie rock world by storm. And of course, I'm talking about Wet Leg with their debut self-titled album, Wet Leg. And it came out on uh, Domino Records. And uh, this band got lots of attention in 2022. Uh, they got nominated to plenty of, of Grammys. They toured quite extensively as a headliner uh, th um, uh, throughout the year. Uh, they were included in pretty much every year-end countdown list out there. And it makes sense because this album is that good, which is crazy to believe because it's a very young band. I think they've only been around for two or three years. And, uh, and what, a, what a debut album. It's probably one of the best debut albums in a very long time. Uh, and again, it makes sense because of the, the cleverness of the lyrics. They add a lot of humor in the lyrics as well combined with the very catchy and melodic music of the songs, they make up to lots of great tracks that are really hard to dislike. Uh, with songs like Chase Lounge and uh, Wet Dream and uh, Your Mom, those are, in my opinion, classic indie rock songs. Uh, again, very hard to believe that this is a band that has been around only for a few years. Crazy, crazy good album from Wet Leg, an instant classic in my opinion. It's 
All right, coming in at number five, and we move on to the top five albums of 2022. And uh, this is Spoon with Lucifer on the Sofa. And uh, this one came out, of course, on Matador Records. Comeback album, in my opinion, for Spoon, because their last album that came out before this one, Hot Thoughts, I didn't think it was that good. It was maybe too experimental on the electronic side, and um, it didn't have a very good result, in my opinion. Which is weird, because Spoon normally comes out with really good records. They're one of the most consistent bands out there. Uh, lots of great uh, rock, uh, guitar-driven songs in this one, uh, particularly with uh, Wild and, uh, of course, The Hardest Cut. Uh, this sounds like a solid, solid uh, Spoon record. The vocals are great, the guitars are awesome, it is catchy as hell. This one has lots of songs that really, uh, after I listened to them, they got stuck in my head for the longest time. I really enjoyed this one. Maybe one of my favorite Spoon records of all time. Again, definitely worth check, uh, checking this one out. Spoon with Lucifer on the Sofa is my number five of the year. All right, coming in at number four, uh, this is the debut album from Smile. And this one's called A Light for Attracting Attention. And it came out on XL Recordings. Uh, essentially a new Radiohead album, uh, of course, uh, because it features uh, Tom York and Johnny Greenwood from Radiohead. And of course, since you have those two guys uh, in this band, uh, this is gonna sound very similar to the music from Radiohead. Uh, but I would say that it does have a little bit of a faster edge in some of the songs, uh, particularly in the song called uh, you, will you Will Never Work in Television Again, uh, which in my opinion, it sounds like a, a punk rock version of a Radiohead song. Uh, it's a killer track. It's one of my favorite songs of the year as well. Uh, and then there's another awesome song near the end called We Don't Know What Tomorrow Brings. Absolutely a stunner, stunner song, a uh, stunning song. Uh, in my opinion, this is almost as good as many Radiohead albums, and that is saying a lot because I'm a huge fan of Radiohead. I own all the records, and, and this one is almost as good as any of them. Uh, excellent, excellent uh, debut album from this new project from Tom and Johnny. Uh, I love this one. The only thing that I would say is, uh, as usual coming in from the guys from Radiohead, it's a little bit of a moody album, so it is not your traditional type of... Uh, uh, like a road trip type of album, right? It's not a very upbeat record, it's a little bit slow, uh, but it, this is a great record to listen to at night, maybe on a rainy, na rainy night. And again, if you like Radiohead, you will definitely enjoy the music from The Smile. Uh, one more thing about this band, if you get a chance to see these guys live, do not miss them. They're absolutely insanely good. I, I just saw them a few weeks ago here in, in Atlanta. They were awesome. And the great thing is that since they're not playing with the Radiohead name, they can afford to play in very smaller or smaller venues, uh, which is something that you couldn't get uh, when they played as Radiohead. All right, now and we move on to my top three albums of the year and coming in at number three, The Bats with Expert in a Dying Field, and it came out on Car Park Records. Third studio album from the Auckland New Zealand band, uh, indie rock band, uh, very catchy music in this one. I never picked up their older records for some reason. Um, I did listen to them, but uh, they never really caught on to me until I listened to this one. This one was just that good. Uh, they have a really interesting track in this one called uh, I think uh, it's one of the first ones, Silence is Golden, uh, track number three in this record. Uh, it might be the introvert's anthem, <laughs> because it's a song about uh, just enjoying uh, just a quiet night at home, or a quiet day at home, just being in silence, which is, I, th I thought it was something very unique, especially in rock bands. You know, rock bands usually brag about being loud and uh, just being out there and partying all day. That's the song about just chilling out, just uh, being by yourself at home and in a quiet day, just enjoying the pleasures of silence, uh, which uh, I thought it was just a very unique message on, the, on, the, uh, on that song. But the, the whole record is really good as well. It's filled with songs like that. Uh, again, very, very catchy indie rock in this one. 
uh, one of the best indie rock bands out there in my opinion nowadays. Again, The Bats with Expert in the Dying Field is my number three of the year. All right, coming in at number two, Jack White with Fear of the Dawn. And it came out, uh, of course, on Third Man Records. Uh, I've been a fan of Jack White and the White Stripes for a very long time. This one hit really hard, mainly because it just has so many bangers of songs. Uh, lots, lots of fast-paced rock songs in this one, more than in his uh, uh, most of his records, I would say. Uh, I mean, just look at the first three songs on the album, uh, Taking Me Back, Fear of the Dawn, The White Raven, absolutely bangers of songs, uh, nearly perfect rock songs in my opinion. Uh, and he also experiments a little bit, uh, of course, with uh, hip hop, with uh, the song called Heidi Ho, where uh, Q-Tip uh, raps in that song, uh, which I, th I thought it works really well in that one. Uh, great, great killer track. And I also like the song called uh, That Was Then, This Is Now, which has a very White Stripes kind of feel in that song. Uh, overall, the whole record has lots of layers, as usual, coming in from um, Jack White. He plays with lots of instruments, instruments in this one. And uh, yeah, just a fantastic album. I think, in my opinion, may be the best Jack White solo album in, in his career. Absolutely an excellent banger of a record. Again, uh, Fear of the Dawn from Jack White is my number two album of the year. Alright, and finally, my number one album of 2022 is Gladdy with uh, their second album, uh, Don't Know What You're In Until You're Out. And it came out uh, this year in 2022 on Plum Records. And this is actually the only record in the whole list that I cannot show you in physical format because the vinyl has, hasn't come out yet. It is scheduled to come out in January. I already pre-ordered it, so I'm going to show it to you in one of my first new videos of the year, uh, of uh, next year. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it is a considered a 2022 album officially. I'm gonna count it as a 2022 album because it's already out there. It's on all streaming platforms. It's all also available on uh, as a digital download. So I'll put a link in the description to the Bandcamp uh, website so you can go ahead and pre or, and order that record. Um, excellent indie rock record. In my opinion, one of the most perfect uh, indie rock albums in the last few years. Uh, if you watch my videos, if you know my taste in music, you'll know that this record is going to be right up my alley with a great mix of very catchy indie rock and very melodic and uh, a little bit faster paced pop punk. So you can tell that those are a little bit of the influences of this band, in my opinion. Uh, Gladdy, indie rock band from Philadelphia, they came out a few years ago with this record, uh, Safe Sense, which also made my top 10 albums of the year when it came out. Great record as well, and it's led by Augusta Cook, from formerly from Cayetana. I also have a couple of her records here, of Cayetana's records. So this new Gladi record is somehow similar to their prior record, Safe Sins, but it includes a lot more faster-paced, pop-punk-inspired songs, uh, particularly with songs like uh, Born Yesterday and Nothing. Uh, in my opinion, they are the best songs in the record. Um, Awesome tunes, uh, and you can tell that uh, Augusta, the songwriter in this band, uh, you can tell that she was dealing with a lot of personal things when she was re uh, writing the songs in this record. I know that she stopped drinking alcohol during that time, so there's a, a lot of songs about recovery. Uh, she also got engaged, so there's a lot of love songs as well, and throwing the pandemic on top of that. So uh, this is also a pandemic record. Uh, so it's a lot of personal, uh, deep meaning uh, songs or themes on, on the overall lyrics of the songs, uh, but combine them with uh, a little bit of fast paced, very melodic, very upbeat pop punk music. Uh, it creates a little bit of a contrast between the meaning of the song and the music itself. Uh, which I thought it was quite unique, uh, or maybe a little bit reminiscent of what the, the Muffs did back in the 90s, especially with the song Sad Tomorrow, where Kim Shadow would sing about something very sad, but actually the music sounded very upbeat and very happy. 
so um, uh, in a way, it made me think that what Augusta or what Gladi was trying to do in this record was ma to make the music part of the, the healing process or try to get over those personal things that you're dealing with during that time. So even though if you were singing about something very deep, very personal, maybe a little bit sad, uh, you uh, the music bec becomes part of the of getting better of the recovery right so you don't associate those personal issues that you're dealing with with something sad you actually associate it with something happy So yeah, uh, nearly a, per a perfect record in my opinion. Uh, again, if you watch my videos, if you know my, my type of music, you'll understand that this is a great combination of indie rock uh, combined with uh, great pop punk uh, music. Uh, again, uh, Gladys is my number one album of the year with Don't Know What You're In Until You're Out. Uh, excellent record. I think if you like bands like Lemuria and um, Swearin and The Muffs and Rilo Kiley, you will enjoy the music from Gladys. So definitely, definitely check, that, check out that record. I'll put a link here in the description to all the records that I mentioned in this video. Uh, everybody out there, thank you for watching my videos in 2022. I look forward to 2023. I should be back fairly soon in 2023 because I, I've actually picked up quite a few records in the last couple of weeks that I haven't shown yet. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching and take care. Bye-bye.